The years leading up to and during menopause are a rite of passage. The wise woman inside of us is calling to slow down, to take stock, to speak our truth, to burn away all that no longer serves us, ready for our next cycle of life. The good news is with the support, community, connection, and most of all, sharing our stories and being truly seen and heard, we will travel through this powerful, sometimes painful, heroine's journey and out the other side. Welcome to the Menopause Podcast, real and raw stories of midlife and mental health. I'm your host, Kylie Patchett, menopause self-care coach and storyteller, and I am so glad you found us. Let's get on with the show. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the podcast. Today, I have the beautiful Mary Dubay from The Strong Formula with us. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I've been looking forward to our chat because we were connected by the beautiful Dr. Kelly Teagle from Wellfem. Yes. Um, and yes, I love the work that Kelly does in the world. So when she shares other people that she, yeah, thinks have a brilliant message for our midlife audience, I'm like, all right, let's dive in. Let's talk. Let's talk. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Let's come and chew the fat. Ah, oh, literally. There you go. There you go. You're talking my language Look already. Me. Look at me. Um, now, for people that don't already know about your lovely self, can you just introduce yourself yes. and what you do in the world and then we'll dive okay. in? So my name is Mary Dubay and I'm otherwise known as Strong Coach Mary. So Beautiful. I think it's just a nickname I've gained because I love to lift cars and I love to throw <laughs> kegs around at the ripe old age of 50. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I, da, 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 I um, am the founder of Strong Formula, which is yep. a menopause-focused ecosystem for women. Oh, ecosystem. So, I love that hello, language. Very hello cool. Hello, over 40. Yes. So, I created this, this world, this universe mm -hmm. out of my own personal story, yeah. which I'd love to share at some yes, point. Yes, please that's, do. That's who I am. So I'm a crusader for women over 40, and I decided to become that at the ripe old age of like 43. So cool. Yeah. I love this. I love this because yeah. I feel like, um, first of all, happy birthday because you do you. just have your 50th. Yes. Um, I feel like midlife very much tends to do this to us. Like we've come to these like fork road moments and we're like, do I continue down the road that I'm on or do I change directions or do I want something different for myself or whatever? So where were you at 43? What started this big right. transition? Because you weren't always strong coach, Mary. No, definitely <laughs> so tell not. us a bit more about that. So, yeah, I started my life as an engineer. So yeah. a civil engineer working in consulting, loving life and mm -hmm. always ambitious and starting businesses. And I had that kind of entrepreneurial, you know, feel yeah. to myself yeah. always. But um yeah, like married and married my childhood sweetheart. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, child one, I'm running a business, child one gets in the way. I'm talking, I'd say 30s actually. Yeah. yeah. So when I say gets in the way, you know, yeah. you yeah. kind of drop off on the priority, yep. the ladder mm -hmm. of priority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, family life. Then I have child number two in my yeah. a couple of years later. Yeah. And again, running businesses and living life and juggling, juggling, the juggle, juggling, the hats. Yep. And then child three is 38 years old. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. by that point, um, I was, you know, juggling, spinning plates. Yeah. My mum, my mum got sick uh, with cancer, who was my oh. best, best, best friend. Oh. So, you know, trying to manage, um, yeah. which is, you know, trying to tread water and keep your head above the water. Oh, yeah. I know that um, feeling well. Suddenly I started feeling anxious, mm -hmm. so which was really unlike the vibrant Mary that everyone knew. Mm -hmm. I started gaining weight rapidly in my early 40s. Yeah. Um, you know, a mix of just loss of, prior, you know, self-prioritisation and yeah. um, just not taking care mm -hmm. and, you know, grabbing meals as you run, yep. drinking yep. wine, possibly a bit too much wine. <laughs> too often. No. Yeah. <laughs> too often. And I think, look, by by the age of I'd lost mum, so that was a big crisis and was running businesses and 
I just lost myself, Kylie. And at about 43, 42, I found myself, I think, what people describe as a nervous breakdown, I think mm. could have been what happened. But yeah. my hormones were everywhere. I was going from doctor to doctor. By this mm. point, I was so anxious I couldn't leave the house. Oh, that's intense. And I was 130 kilos. I was in so much physical pain. Yeah. And so physical pain, emotional, spiritual pain. I was going to say emotional pain too. Yeah. yeah and not yeah. coping. And, mm. you know, I always get a bit teary when I talk mm. about it because it takes me there. But I don't know, just a moment of crisis and a, yeah. and a life and death moment. So, mm. you know, sorry for being so dark, but it was just. No, no, no. That's what the reality. What am I going to do? Yeah. yeah. And I remember just um, just a moment in bed and I talk about, a moment of vision, like just a visual that I had. And it was the most powerful thing. But I visualised a Mary, not even the Mary I used to be, but just a Mary that was healthy, Mm -hmm. that was agile, that was, you know, I could see her hair, a happy Mary, like a free Mary. Yeah. And I decided that day, that dark day, and I've got the date. So it was Mm -hmm. the 16th of December and I remember it. And it was, I woke up in severe pain, severe Mm -hmm. anxiety, and I just promised that girl in the reflection that I was going to help her. Yeah. And that was it. It was like the tiger that, you know, the vision, like Mm -hmm. it just narrowed. Mm Mm-hmm. And I went, that's it. Today is the day. Yeah. You were in enough pain. I was in enough pain and I just wanted to live a happy and healthy life. And it was Mm -hmm. real. It just suddenly became that visual became real. Yeah. And I just started going for it. And like most women, I saw a flag outside a gym. Mm -hmm. It was called CrossFit. And I used to drive past it. Yeah. Most women think, okay, weight loss. If I lost weight, yeah. that brings happiness. <laughs> weight loss <laughs> equals happiness. So that yeah. was the trigger. It was like, mm-hmm. I'm going to lose the weight. Yeah. So what happened next was um, quite remarkable. Uh, I walked into this gym, which was all about strength training mm-hmm. and a new community, a new environment, just eye-opening. Uh, I used to run for hours and cut out carbs. That was yeah, my go-to. Yeah. You and the right? rest of Australia <laughs> who grew up in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The diet mentality, the yeah. guilt, the self-hatred, that cycle, mm-hmm. you know, you lose being the weight. Being good, being bad, yeah, all of good, that. Good, bad, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. So I learned a new way just through just the incredible coaches that I met and the community, but yeah. strength training and what it did to my body. So yeah. suddenly. I was lifting weight and Mm -hmm. it was different. It felt different. Strength, building a strong body started translating. So obviously like weight loss happened without, you know, like that was just a a natural consequence. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it actually became not important. So it started as almost like an addiction to feeling strong. So the more that I lifted, the more that I wanted to lift. Mm-hmm. And the more that I did that and the more that I cared about myself and what I put into my mouth and how I slept, and it was this holistic way of yeah. looking at um, health, Yeah, I just started transforming but building resilience. It was mm. what was happening on the inside that mattered. Yeah. yeah. So that there's, building there's, strength yeah. externally translated and then suddenly I had this F off. Can I say it? Yeah, 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 you can. Absolutely. (laughs) You know, that I was like, oh my gosh, nothing's going to get in the way of me reaching my goal. Yeah. It's such a different feeling in your body too, because I've been weight training since I was about 18. I had the, I had the blessing of, you know, back in the days, I don't know, when the hell was I 18? The early nineties, um, where it was all G-string leotards and aerobics, yep. like step yep. aerobics, right? So you there. picture, so picture this, people: G-string leotard. I can remember the leotard, Larry pink and green and purple pattern with a pair of green like tights underneath. You know, 
knee length. And I walk in ready to go to my step aerobic class because back in those days, that's what you did. And the trainer hadn't turned up or something. Anyway, that wasn't on. And I was just really lucky that the personal trainer that was at that gym was like, have you ever tried like lifting weights? Have you ever done a program like that? I'm like, oh no, like that's not for me sort of thing. And luckily, um, because it was like, it was a younger guy and because I've been going there a lot, I I trusted him. Like, you know, there was that sort of already, that was a, a connection. I was like, oh yeah, I'll give it a go. And I had the same, I agree, it's an addiction because the, and particularly when, if you've come from a state of high anxiety, which to me is your energy is all up here and very scattered, Lifting makes you feel so much more grounded and like you hold yourself different. Yeah. And you respect yourself differently and all of those things. It is completely the opposite to I must be as small as possible. Yes. Because that's the patriarchy going, women must be blah, blah, yeah. blah. It's a very different vibe. So I completely understand how yeah. it's it's addictive. And <laughs> totally. And what it does to your my anxiety just dissipated. Yeah. So it obviously it took a long time, but yes. the more that I worked on myself, yeah. my physical self, the less I started. I remember like I used to take sertraline, a yes. high dose, um, mm-hmm. and it was cutting the tablet in half and then cutting it in half again mm-hmm. and then sometimes mm-hmm. saying, well, I'm, you know. Yes. Um, but what, so two things happened. I there's this amazing photo and it's the before and after on my website. Yeah. It's it's not a weight loss story, but it's so, it just shows you what I achieved in one yes. year. Mm-hmm. So for anyone who's listening and wants to have a look, like strongformula.com. Yeah. Yes, we all put all the links There's a great the photo notes. there. But again, yeah. I'm the message is strong. So yeah. it's not a weight loss story. I don't no. want women thinking, you know, I lost 30 kilos and blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. But so that happened and so I was never, I went from doctor to doctor to mm-hmm. doctor and I felt really unsupported. So that was yeah. one. Yeah. A year later I was a CrossFit coach, I was a strength coach, I was teaching women so I had a complete career change. I just yeah. fell in love with wellness. So good. And I was teaching the five pillars, which was food. Mm-hmm. I'm not a nutritionist but I yeah. learned so much about yeah, yeah. food. Fuel and I body. Used you know, just broadly, let's mm-hmm. eliminate sugar, let's do this, let's yep. do that. Yep. And so movement, uh, uh, obviously strength training, sleep, yep. breath, and yep. mindset. So I was yep. preaching and teaching these five pillars and I was documenting everything that I'd Yes, learned. yeah, yeah, yeah. So one, I was unsupported, I felt. So mm-hmm. no one checked my hormones. No yep. one checked anything. And I feel like perhaps I was going through perimenopause. Oh, well, I would say so. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So I was just told you've got to see counselor, you've got to see psychiatrist, you've got which were amazing. All yes. everything that I did led me to where I'm at. Yeah. So of course. Yeah. I appreciated the process, but I wish there was more support for women and more information. Yeah. So a year later, I went. Okay, I had a massive like almost like another moment, like that one on the 16th of December. It was a year later and I decided that I was going to help women at scale. Mm. So I wanted women to feel supported, to know, to just have more information and this Mm -hmm. new message of strong, 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 strong. Yes, yes. So I created Strong Formula. So that was the, the next chapter of my life. Yeah which was supporting women through peri and menopause. And I sat down and I I drew this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So I drew a big circle and I drew, you know, strong formula, the app. Yep. Which was, you know, based on my five pillars. Mm -hmm. And, of course, now it's a non-hormonal method of treating peri and menopause. And then I drew a big shop which I now call Menotique. So I I wanted um, products. Like everyone said, try this magnesium, try this skincare. (laughs) I wanted something centralised. So it's now called Menotique and I've done it, which is incredible, and I've created the app. So, you know, this universe is kind of coming together. 
Yeah, so you know, good. it's not complete, but yeah. I'm moving in the right direction and I'm helping women yeah. at scale. And I think there's a couple of things that are standing out to me, like both in in your joining the gym, because CrossFit is such a um it's such a strong community. It and it isn't focused on how small you can get your body. It's about how many reps, what are you improving today? You know, and it's it's that very strong supportive community um and so what i'm hearing from you is the connection and the community was really key to you underpinning the transformation now with a strong formula you're actually giving other women that but through a you know a different framework not necessarily in person um because i think when i talk to like i'm i'm glad we're having more conversations that's great I still think that we're not having enough conversations and we certainly don't have holistic health lifestyle trained doctors who also like rather than just straight away offering, you know, the magic conventional medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Or offer those things in conjunction with other things, because I think the other thing that disempowers women is like this, shit thing called menopause is happening to me and I have no effing control. I don't feel like myself. My body's changing. The way I deal with stress is changing or whatever, like whatever that situation is and feeling yet yeah, not that control is not the right word. It's like, it's being done to me. And what I'm hearing from you is that you were able to um Take back the key pillars that do massively influence someone's personal experience of perimenopause and menopause and, yeah, help them to transform yourself and then go on to do it for others. Yes, like, yes. and you're right. So to touch on your first point, community yeah. is key. Yes. So I've spent, oh, my gosh, I've t- tireless hours building a community within Strong Formula. Yeah. Um, and that's my, you know, socials to my in-app community, yes, to the community that I, you know, I have women reaching out all the time and I love speaking to them. It's yeah. just part of what, you know, it's just talking to someone and understanding what they're going through, how I can help them, even if it's not using the app or just mm-hmm. a listening ear. Yeah. Sometimes you just need Being to heard. speak to someone yep. <laughs> and say it's okay and that, yeah. You know, perhaps your anxiety is not just here for a short, whatever, anxiety, sore body, sleep. You are going to get through this. Yeah. Hope and inspiration is what women see when they see me. They go, what? You did this in 45? Yeah. You know, this is possible. Amazing. You just need to want it enough. And I say that. And it's not, it's not like some women need HRT. Like the answer is not. It's yeah, not yeah. a simple answer. So it's there's not a one size fits all. No, definitely not. I think um I I share a lot on the podcast about mental health being my biggest challenge during um perimenopause and menopause. And I tried for a very long time to not go down the HRT route and I have finally <laughs> decided. And I have to say for myself that having HRT to just keep everything a little bit more balanced has allowed me the space to then up my self-care and, you know, do all of those things that I know are really good for me. Um, The biggest thing for me was without HRT, I just wasn't sleeping, like I constantly wasn't sleeping. And I'm a sleep scientist by original training and that is so annoying. Like, you know, all the sleep hygiene, all the things that you should be able to do that will influence sleep. And still I'm awake every night. <laughs> yes. I don't know like that last night, actually. But um, yeah, I think uh, I'm very wary of anyone who says there's only one solution. And I think for all of us, there has to be a huge toolbox, but we have to include the lifestyle factors that we can influence. Because if we're so not, important. we're not putting the power in women's hands. Yeah. And I think that's a very dangerous thing because then we can frame this transition as like, something shit, something awful, something that means I'm getting old and decrepit or achy or yeah. whatever. Like, And we all know that our mindset, you know, creates our reality. So whatever we're putting out in front of us, we're literally filtering for. Um, can you talk a little bit more? You used the word building resilience before. So when you look back at 
the version of Mary that was on the 16th of December or maybe the 15th of December, let's go one day yeah, back one day in before. time, you're not feeling yourself, um, you've got a sense that there's an, you know, original, more energetic, more able to cope version of yourself in the past at some point and that kind of feels, um, I guess, not maybe not accessible. I don't know, actually, that's I'm putting words into your mouth. But my question was really, when you look back at that version of yourself and your ability to deal with stress and that resilience bounce back ability, how would you describe then versus now and how well you're able to? Because I think yeah, this is a really key part of what well, certainly been, I can only speak from my personal experience. For me, all of a sudden I went from someone who could easily juggle multiple things and was very good at coping and high energy um, to very little stress tolerance. And it was really discombobulating because I was like, who the fuck is this? Like I am not yes. that person that can't yes. get my shit together to get yes. eggs for dinner. Like I just, yes. I'm not that person. Yeah. Um, so the, my identity shifted. So what would, how would you describe the resilience? I think, um, okay, so I think it's the layered approach. I felt very overwhelmed. So mm-hmm. I think as women with just our responsibilities, what oh. were our expectations of ourselves, the expectation, mm-hmm. you know, we're mothers, we're yeah carers everything um there's there's a sense of being overwhelmed so I remember the 15th of December Mary Mm -hmm. I couldn't even go for dinner I just Mm -hmm. being in a social setting just it was this this fear that overcame Mm -hmm. me and I think Mm -hmm. it was when I reflect back it was being overwhelmed there's a sense of being overwhelmed and I I can't this I can't attitude yeah but I kept saying I can't, and just even basic things, get in the car, go to Woolies, yeah. get some milk. Yep. I can't. Mm-hmm. Like I look back and I think, what happened? Mm. But I do believe it was a f- combination of my physical self, like yes. lack too much copper, not enough zinc. I feel like yeah. it was a mix of that mm-hmm. as well as my environment, just high pressure. Yeah. So, you know, I don't blame myself for it. I think mm-hmm. it's just everything at the time. Yeah. But for me, resilience, I built it through, and this is going to sound crazy, but it was it's all about putting myself in very uncomfortable Good situations yeah. a lot. Mm-hmm. Whether that's making myself do that, whatever mm-hmm. it was that I feared, just mm-hmm. doing it over yeah. and over and over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. obviously changing my lifestyle so no alcohol I stopped drinking for a year so I think health is a layered approach and resilience is is layered it just Mm -hmm. doesn't happen yeah it's something you build Mm -hmm. so stop drinking was me yeah stop putting rubbish into my mouth Mm -hmm. you know processed foods like anything out of the ground put it in your body you know, anything you can recognize, anything that looks like it came out of the ground. Yeah, exactly. Put like, that where in did your this body. come from? Yes. Then start to put yourself in uncomfortable situations mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. So it was, holy shit, how do I lift this weight? Yeah. I'm terrified. And then doing it, yeah. this sense of achievement, the sense of achievement by making myself get in the car to get the milk that I was Mm -hmm. scared to get the day before. I come home, I'm not drinking. I've substituted Mm -hmm. whatever I was, you know, white wine for something else, you know, like a green tea. Mm -hmm. Tick. Yeah. Tick, 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 tick. Suddenly I feel like I'm, I'm able to do a little bit more. Yeah. And a little bit more. And that takes training. Put yourself in an, another uncomfortable situation. Let's go again. Let's go Merit, again. Merit, reward, mm-hmm. not self-hatred, not guilt, not yeah. I can't. And some days going, well, I couldn't do it today. That's okay. Yeah. Acceptance, self-love. Yeah. Like, and also I my community changed, Kylie. Like I lost friends. I lost a lot of friends yeah. because of my new self. Yes. Because I started 
respecting myself. So, yeah, I found myself in social situations where I'm just being my true self, vibrant, I'm holding a soda, minding my own business, (laughs) and suddenly everyone's feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. And I'm not sure why. And Mm. then just the change and obviously I started respecting myself yes and my body and I did not become a preacher but I found myself at the center of every conversation every time yeah so you know how why are you doing this life's too short just drink come just on drink. have a drink just it's enjoy like, things I don't want one no no I don't want one and look right now I drink once every two weeks, I have a glass of whatever. Yeah. It, yeah. It, but it was a thing for me before. It was five o'clock a wine. Yes. It started being a four o'clock wine. And it started dependency. becoming a three o'clock wine. Yeah. And then I had to stop because my daughter was two. Mm-hmm. She said, Mom, it's bath time. Get your wine. And I Ooh. thought, oh, okay. Ooh. Oh, that's one of those yeah. moments where you go, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, no not Mm. doing this but so my whole you know I lost friends I gained a new community yeah healthy community and you know it was just a real shake up the last the last 10 years has been like my whole life flipped on its head yeah 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 yeah. so and I'm just as happy I'm just like on this crusade as well as like this bone thing that I'm on so I need to tell you a bit about oh yeah tell me about the bones (laughs) so when I first walked into that gym, there was mm-hmm. a little caravan outside and mm-hmm. it was what I now remember is a DEXA scan, DEXA a mobile scan, yeah. DEXA scan. So yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone was doing this scan and I said, what is this? And they mm-hmm. said, Mary, do it because you've just started strength yes. training. It'll be yes. really good for you to just yeah. be able to yes. compare. So, of course, I did it. Perfect. Um, And, oh, my gosh, Kylie, like I retested myself a few years later Mm -hmm. and a significant difference in my bone density and obviously my body composition because I had my big transformation. But Mm -hmm. what? Then it all came together. So I'm, you know, talking to women, suddenly they're losing bone density. It's become an issue for women over 40, you know. Yes. Going through peri and mm-hmm. obviously the decline. Yeah. Osteopenia and osteoporosis territory. And 60s yeah. and all I do is talk about bone health. It's one yeah. of my passions. Yeah. So if there's one message, ladies, Keep moving. Do what you love. Do what yes, you love. If you absolutely. love playing tennis, play tennis. If you love running, go running. Mm-hmm. Do something that's resistance yeah. as well to help Completely. with your bones. Yeah, because I think the biggest thing for me, I, I did um a part of my, I've had all sorts of careers in health and wellbeing, but I spent a couple of years in an aged care facility doing um like health and wellbeing programs and things. And You just need to go to somewhere like that to see the difference between a 60-year-old who has chosen more supportive health and lifestyle factors, sorry, it has chosen less supportive health and lifestyle factors and is now in a wheelchair because they have multiple damaged discs and they're not able to move around themselves at 60. And I'm like, that's 12 years' time. I beg your freaking pardon. Yeah. And then you see the 90-year-olds that have actually done things that have um, impacted their bone health and they don't even need a walker. And I'm like, I know which camp I want to be in because yeah. I am fiercely independent and I yeah. love my freedom. As soon as you cannot move around yourself or as soon as you're in the danger zone of as soon as I fall down, I break a hip because my bone density is so shit, you're in dangerous territory and you have, by definition, limited your life or at least your health span. Um, so, yeah, you're preaching to the converted. I'm yeah. just like. And I yeah. I always talk about let's, someone says, you, you know, why do you train? I train for my old woman's body. I don't train for a bikini body. Yeah, no. I train yeah. for dense bones, strong mm-hmm. muscles, functional yeah. independence, yep. um, healthy Being heart. Yeah. Cognitive, cognitive, yep. like how powerful, the most 
powerful thing you can do for your mental health, for your yeah. brain, yeah. is go and run, go and lift weights. Move. Like noradrenaline, yeah. serotonin, all those, those, it's just boom. Yeah. It's instant. Other than taking a hit of heroin, like there is no, which we're not doing. No, we're not doing. We are you not know what I'm any... saying? This is real. This is yeah. real. It's it's physical. You mm. walk. I mean, how often? Go for a walk if you're feeling down. It's mm-hmm. real. Yeah. It 100% is. I think um, when I feel into, like I just at the end of last year did specific yoga certification for menopause and beyond. And one of the biggest things that we really focused on is like our chronic disease risk drastically increases as soon as our estrogen levels start declining. Um, And the three biggest life limiting things are brain health in terms of um, structural and therefore cognitive health, and then also heart health and bone health. And then the subsequent things behind that, the ones that can impact your health, so not necessarily limit your life as much as the first three, but things like diabetes and all of the like the the yeah, the, the chronic disease, chronic disease, yes, yeah, heart disease, yeah, that build up, and every single one of those is helped by holistically taking care of yourself. So yeah, I I, I see people like, oh, I've put on weight, so I'm going to go and lose weight, and I'm like. What about all the other areas of your health? Are you feeling, um, I don't know, when you're talking before, when you say, you know, keep putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, something that I've really, really anchored into in the last few years is that, like, you have to go first. You don't just get self-trust magically handed to you on a platter. And and listening to your story, what I'm hearing again and again is you little by little and layer by layer built resilience, but you also built self-trust because you said, today I'm going to choose a green tea and not the wine. Today I'm going to get to the gym and shift 20 kilos instead of the 10 that I could two months ago. And that by definition builds your self-trust. And it's like if we want to be living and aging healthfully, the foundation of everything is how we treat ourselves. And I think that that's getting lost. It's still getting lost in that we have to be a particular size because it's all about weight and and the whole thinness equals godliness shit that is still yeah. so, yeah. Oh, don't even get me started. Anyway. No, I'm 100 kilos. I'm 95 kilos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel. Amazing. And I'm in proportion and, mm-hmm. yes, I'm large, but I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I'm healthy. I mean, the healthy, you know. And you're vital though. And th- this is the thing, like when you see 90-year-olds that have, are still, you know, mobile and everything, one of the things that you notice too about personalities is that it's the people that have a more positive mindset that are more anchored to, you know, they've got their besties that they hang out with and they're, you know, that type of stuff. Yeah. And it's like all of these things nourish us. It's not just it's very much about what we put in our mouths as well, but it's not just that. So, um, tell us a little bit more, please, about – that was very demanding, wasn't it? Tell us a little bit more. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Could you please <laughs> tell us um, a bit more about the Strong Formula app because I know there's going to be yeah. lots of people listening in and they're like, oh, my God, she's describing me right now. This is this is the 16th of December, me. This is um, me, yeah. So what I decided to do was layer it. Because my journey to wellness was layered, yes, I decided to layer a program, mm-hmm. and obviously it's delivered by our app, so it's yes. easy. Yeah, you download the app, you sign in, and on mm-hmm. day one, yep, you meet me. You know, mm-hmm. via video, you can yeah. do it anywhere, anytime. Yep. So it's based on those five pillars. So as Beautiful. I said, strong training, mm-hmm. beginners, strong program. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got it's broken up into three sections. So mm-hmm. a warm-up, yeah, a strong workout, so strength yep. training, and it's just mm-hmm. two dumbbells. Yep. And then I've added a wad. So a workout of the yeah, day. A day, yeah. So a workout. I was like, <laughs> all right, I remember my CrossFit days. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I've added like a workout for women because lots of women use it and yep. some have never moved. So yes. I don't want them to 
to do the workout. I just want them to do mm -hmm. the strength training session. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's from absolute beginners, beginners yeah. all the way through to women, you know, who are in their early 40s who mm -hmm. have done some level of strength training before. Yeah. So layered approach, get to meet me, mm -hmm. then day one is nutrition. Day yeah. two is a workout. Day mm -hmm. three is sleep. Yep. Day four is breath. Love Day that. five is mindset. So yep. I tell my story and I talk about all those things we've talked about. Get uncomfortable. Yep. Work-life balance. Self-prioritization. Mm. Fear. I don't know. I talk about all of it. And yep. I get deep and dirty and I talk yep. about my personal experiences and all the lessons. Yeah, beautiful. And then week two, so you go through like a strong training like you learn how to deadlift, you learn mm -hmm. how to press, and yeah. it's all based on functional movement. So yeah. I want you when you're 70 yes, to be to holding be a to, basket yep. and putting that basket up on of a shelf. clothes yep. into whatever. And things like, and this is the, the big mobility stuff, it's like, can you get up off the floor? Exactly. There's people that were coming to my yoga class that were in their 30s that were yep. not able to get up off the floor without yep. significantly, you yep. know, scaffolding. And I was just yep. like, yep. far out, man. By the time you're 60 or 70, you've got yep. no hope. If you get yep. on the floor, however you get there, whether it's a fall or purposefully, you're not able to get up. Like and that's it's interesting scary. because I have a burpee mm -hmm. in the in my workout. So some women go, what? A burpee, now I can do 100 burpees. Yeah. Right? You can say three, two, one. I reckon one. I can do like three at the moment. I'm but so what deep. I, what, I'm, what I want to get to <laughs> is that you don't have to do 100 burpees. No. You can step it out. It's mm -hmm. this scaled versions mm -hmm. of everything I do. So good. So just to learn, get up off the ground. The exactly what you said, Kylie. We need to be able to yep. get on the floor. And get back up, even yeah. if it's just stepping it back to start mm -hmm. with and stepping it back. Or if you can't, you can't. I've got yeah. a scaled option. Yeah. But I want you to build to that. Yeah. Now, the nutrition is menopause focused. Yep. It's about adding value, mm -hmm. not about deleting whole food groups. <laughs> hello, hello. No more restrictive diets. No uh, more guilt. No more shame. Yeah. This is what your plate should look like mm -hmm. as a menopausal woman. Yeah, beautiful. This is what I want it to look like. Mm -hmm. These are very simple. Yeah. This is what you should eat. This is what you kind of, you know, like eat less and mm -hmm. eat some of. Yeah. Right? Occasional. <laughs> Occasional. So yeah. it's simplified for you and yeah. you go on and, you know, you learn about dairy, the importance of just all of it. Yeah. And it's menopause focused. And then um, that's it. There's the community element as well. So yeah. you jump in and then there's, you know, women all around the world that say, I'm having a great day. I'm yeah. having a shit day. Yeah, I yeah. Need help. It's so um, good. I, the, I think the community and connection thing, well, I know for myself, like I live in country Queensland and I live um, in a town where I've got, I have got friends, but all of my close friends are way away, like Sydney or Sunshine Coast or whatever. And I have really found, I th I do think that that's partly though the transition of menopause. Like I've found my, I've really wanted to sort of like fold in and just get in my own little bubble and just be with myself a lot of the time. But I do think the isolation thing, it's so easy and particularly if your mental health is not great to get so isolated that you feel like you're the only one going through this. It's like, oh, no, honey, there's millions of us, literally millions of us across the world going through a menopause transition at the moment. Mm. And Interesting. I've got a Facebook group of 3,000 women across, the, yeah. you know, the world who just every day are pouring out their hearts or providing their tips and their stories. So that's amazing. Yeah. But there's Menotique as well. So the store, I've got incredible products coming. Yeah. yeah. Um, menopod like it looks like a mouse actually and it Ooh. relieves hot flushes oh so good so coming all the way from canada it's oh. just like the people that i'm meeting kylie Where and the brands that are reaching out to be yeah. part of it yeah incredible so great you know 
supplements, skincare, hair care, you name oh, it. So it's good. starting to just grow slowly. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Yeah. It's good because it sounds like it's like, because I think the other thing that overwhelms women when this starts happening is, oh my God, there's so much information and yeah. everyone has a different opinion, but bringing it all in together into the one sort of hub. Yeah. Because if I, I do hear the word overwhelmed so often, it's like, what's the opposite of overwhelmed? Just simplify it into one place where I can just yeah. go. And also I love the fact that it's on an app. So like for people like me, I have a fully, actually two really well equipped gyms but there's no PTs that like they're both unmanned yes. type of thing. So to be able to sort of have a phone with you to be like, okay, yeah, yeah. I know what I'm up to. Yep. This is what I'm doing sort of thing. Um, that, that is attractive because I, I think then it makes it so much more accessible for people. Um, can we, I'm going to address the elephant in the room because, oh my God, I literally just had a conversation the other day with a friend who's like, I don't want to start weight training because I'm going to bulk up. And I was like, oh, no, oh. please. Can we just address that? Because, I I mean, I have spoken about that on the podcast a, a lot and, and the way that when I'm lifting and particularly challenging, like building on your lifting program, that I feel so much more grounded and so much more capable. That's the word that keeps coming mm-hmm. to me. Um, but there's still some women. And I reckon they're the 70s and 80s babies that probably had mothers that were on Weight Watchers cutting out carbs and running on treadmills for hours. Can we just address that, please? Yeah. Look, the level of training that you need to do and the, the, the weights need to be so heavy. Yep. In order to build muscle to a point where. I don't know. I don't know what the vision is that you look like a woman, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't understand it. I lift 60, 70 kilos above my head. Uh-huh. And yes, I look, I look um, toned. toned, but mm. there's no bulk. I mean, yeah. I'm not out of proportion. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Not met. I'm one of Australia's strongest women. Like, yeah, yeah. You cannot, you cannot build that level of muscle, even if yes. you try. So, yeah. For those who are sceptical, please, 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 please yeah. just, just try it even, you know, yeah. is what I would say. Exactly. Um, and if you hate the way your body looks, stop. Yeah, exactly. So, Nothing I don't is... know. I don't know what to say because it's so, it's beyond my, my too. scope, my brain. That... I almost, um, I actually found myself kind of, I was actually exasperated to still be having the conversation. I'm like, wow, that's really judgmental, number yeah. one. Yeah. But also I'm like, you don't know what you're missing out on because that yes. endorphin hit, like I, I do get it from most exercise, but like this big, but weights, like challenging yes. weights with yes. good form because I have a, yeah, I have a ligament disorder, so I have to be very careful with the okay. way that I'm shifting heavy weights now, which I've only just discovered. But um, that is the biggest, strongest, most intense endorphin hit. And I'm just like, you're missing out. I I literally think if I wasn't lifting like challenging weights in the gym when my mental health was at its worst, I would have hit that like breakdown or or like whatever we want to talk about. I mean, it got pretty bad, but that was my main coping strategy of like shifting my state in the mornings was just all you have to do is get up and get to the gym. Yep. Everything else will happen from there. So you just have to, and lucky for me, it's literally around the corner. I'm like, I can walk there oh, easily. Yeah. yeah. So that, but that was how I managed because I just, I really relied on that endorphin hit um, mm. to just lift, yep. you know, my mental yep. health or my Provide clarity. I mean, I, I, yeah. I have, I have such brain fog. That's the only thing mm-hmm. that I, the last symptom that I'm dealing with. Yeah. And, yeah. It's okay. I know. I know what to do, yeah. and and mm-hmm. that's like to move and to, you know, try to get to bed early and to yeah. practice my sleep hygiene and things yes. that I teach. I need to act on. So, um, so what at two o'clock this morning when I was looking at my blue lit device, doom scrolling, you wouldn't advise that. No, no, we don't advise that. <laughs> do not grab your phone. So yeah, like. We're all, we're all, we're all in this together. We're all feeling similar. It's just that we, you know, some of us just know 
or just are more informed. And yeah. you know, hopefully someone's listening and 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 wants to take that leap of faith and grab that yeah. app and just go yeah. on a journey with me. Um, you know, I just through think the app. I love I I I have a history of um pretty chronically cyclical dieting, which then ended up in massive binge eating because I went on a super restrictive, I'm gonna call it a food cult, which cut out huge amounts of food groups, et cetera. So let's not do that, everybody. Let's give up the restricted eating practices. Where was I going with that? There was a point to that. <laughs> this is this it's is where trend. my yeah. Yeah, this is where my menopause ends up affecting Oh, my yes, cognition. welcome to my world. Yes, I walk no. around with the scissors, scissors and I go, what was I doing with this? Where was, was I, I going? Was I chopping up somebody? <laughs> like, <laughs> One of the kids? Exactly. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask. I, I mean, I don't know where my brain was going before, but I'm interested how has so how old are your kids now? So 19, 17 and 12. Okay. And your and this was about ten years ago. The no, not ten years. No, seven years. no, like seven, seven. seven. Yeah, forty-three, fifty. Yeah, cool. Um, so the changes that you've made to taking care of yourself in this way, how have they impacted? And you've got the two three oldest daughters, the girls. Yes. Three so daughters. I'm really, yeah, really. Oh, three daughters. Sorry, three I thought daughters. it was a boy. There you go. Yes. So how do you feel that? you leading by this example has yeah. changed the way that they, yeah. has it shifted? Yeah, look, I, I'm i always, I learned from my mum. Mm-hmm. She always said, you were such a nightmare, Mary, like so strong and such a leader and a nightmare. Like there were times when I was 15, I'd, you know, do oh. all the running away from home and, yeah, you know, coming from a real, you know, a traditional Greek, Greek family, background, I was like, yep. no, I no. want a boyfriend. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was talking about confidence with the girls mm-hmm. and what I do love is they all take pride in their health mm-hmm. and they respect their bodies. So, and it, it's as simple as them going, mom, guess what I did today? I, I squatted this, this amount yeah. of weight and they've yeah. all got this vision that strong is beautiful from them. Oh. You know, job done, Mama. Job done, and we talk yeah. about confidence. And I always mm. go, girls, look at Mum, look at mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. I'm a size 14. Sometimes yep. I'm a size 16. Yeah, I yeah. love the way I look. Yes. Look at the bikinis I wear. I'm never conscious. I'm really proud of who I am because yes. I feel great. Yeah. I feel like age for me is a feeling. Yeah. It's an attitude, um, and I feel like the girls have starting to feel yeah. it's t- t- just grappling that idea of mm-hmm. confidence and yeah you know even the 12 year old yesterday we were walking she said mum this this boy at school said oh you're so confident and I said yeah well my mum is strong coach Mary you know? <laughs> and I'm just laughing going oh my god job done job done I love it and also how isn't that the perfect demonstration of how confident women are quite often seen and interacted with in a negative, Yeah, you know, that, that confidence is, if a woman is confident, she's up herself or she's yeah. conceited or she, whatever, yeah. like yeah. sub in the bullshit there. Yeah. But yeah. if a man is confident, then yeah. he's just sure of himself or whatever. Like it's, it's seen as this like normal for a man, but not for a female. And I'm like, fuck that as well. Like, mm. well, you can't live in my family, you know, <laughs> with that mentality. It just does. You just, yeah, oh, you will be dear. unseen. But no, that's not true. I agree. I just yeah. feel like, you know, confidence. Like they see me, they see me so confident, and not always, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Like, of course, we all have our moments. But yeah, of course, yeah. You know what I say, how I dress, how I feel, my energy. Yeah. I talk about I I talk about you know aging. I talk about how it's feeling. How yes. can I feel so great at fifty? Who mm-hmm. cares what number I am? I'm I'm moving well. I'm eating well. I've I've got a great attitude. I'm in yeah. love. My heart is full. Yes, my heart is full. I'm doing purposeful I've, work. I talk about a warm heart. Yeah, 
I talk about a warm heart and the girls say, oh, we've got a warm heart too, Mum. Oh, it's so good. And we've been through a lot. I've been yeah. through a divorce. I've been, mm. you know, we, we haven't had the most easy journey. Yeah. But it's all about perspective and gratitude. I learned about gratitude, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. I'm here. I'm present. I'm so lucky to be here talking to you, Carly. Yeah. Like yeah. how brilliant that we're sharing thoughts and emotions and laughing and crying like this yeah. is all part of just yeah. who we are and the beautiful our journey yeah exactly and I think when you say about like shifting from being an engineer to this health and well-being and it became such a focus for you it's like I think for a lot of women I, I certainly did I was still in a corporate so I had my own business then went back to corporate consultancy and now back in my own business. And I think I just had a moment last year where I was like, I am not delivering my gifts to the world in any format in this corporate environment. It's, it doesn't, it doesn't suit me. Like I love freedom. Turn up at a desk at 8.30. Sorry. (laughs) Like that is just not, that does not vibe with my vision of the world. Yeah. And I feel like there's this natural kind of questioning. Um, I mentioned um, in an interview I recorded before that I read a book called The Upgrade, which talks about how women's brains change during menopause transition. And one of the things that the lady said was estrogen is a hormone of accommodation. And as our estrogen drops, we start to go, oh, actually I'm not available for that type of relationship or I'm not available for treating my body like that or I will not over deliver and disempower my children or or whatever. Um, But I think it's such a beautiful thing that when you hit this kind of transition time for yourself, that you've found as a result, this purpose, which is so important for our own health. And I think that we are both of the generation where we are paying for being told that you can have it all because we went and got it all, but it may not have been the all that actually deeply satisfied us. Yep. And I think that we're, you know, we're on we that align. cusp. Yeah. We align. Mm. Definitely. I just yeah. my engineering career was yeah, it was it, it built it built the framework for who I am because yeah. my digital, you know, my engineering brain yeah, allows organizing, me to explore, yeah. you know, technology. Mm-hmm. And I love yep. that. And yep. I'd never not do my six year crazy and en- civil engineering course. But yeah. I my heart somewhere else. Yes. I'm on a crusade now and it does get tough, you know. It's a very yeah. competitive world. Yeah. Um this health and wellness space, but Yeah. I am not going anywhere. No. <laughs> I will be 70 and 80 and, and still weights and till I've got one foot in the grave going, yeah. make sure your bones are strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? I know. I'm like, I'm in my grave. I'm 130, but my bone density is still brilliant. You know? <laughs> um, yeah. Do you know, uh, is it Train with Joan? Do you, are you connected to her on Instagram? No. So she, I think she's just turned, did she turn 70 or 80? She took up weight training. So I think it's her daughter or her son is a personal trainer, has a gym, and she took up weight training like I want to say in her 60s. Okay. And she is a freaking legend. I think I know who you're talking oh. about. Okay. Train with Joan. I'm going Train to with Joan. Her. Yeah. She's so beautiful and she has such a cute little personality to go with it as well. But, man, she lifts some heavy shit. And just the way that she holds herself, yeah. I'm just like, yeah, I'm pretty sure she, maybe it was only 70. But anyway, either way. Yeah. Like I'm comparing her to people that I know that are in yeah. and they are already old yeah. in their heads, they're old in their bodies, they're, you know, yeah. got chronic disease. It's even patterns. my dad, you know, Kylie, when we're in Greece, he's from a tiny island mm-hmm. and he, after losing mum, he yeah. decided to go and he met another woman, which was yeah. amazing, yeah. Helen, and he moved to Port Stephens. Yes, so yes. Northern north north of sydney yeah and then he spent six months in greece on the island because we've got oh, a house nice. there yeah, yeah yeah and i was watching him he's got a yacht and he just he's obsessed with fish the sea like he's a he's an yeah, amphibian honestly blood. he's yep. he's got webbed feet we always mm-hmm. make fun of him right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he was rowing and i was just looking at his body and he's 75 yeah and for as long as i've known him he pushes he pulls he lifts 
sense, like, Mm -hmm. and I can see it in his body. Like he just, he's just got so much mass, muscle mass for a 75-year-old. And it's all credit to that pushing, pulling, lifting. functional fitness. Like all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's, I was looking at him going, that's who I want to, that's who I want to be. Yeah, yeah. My dad was, um, so he was 55 when I was born, so he was 91 when he died and I have always had his longevity and he was like super positive, super connected, was um, working at Meals on Wheels for the old people in inverted commas when he was 90 and the old people were 60. Anyway, um, he used to go and peel potatoes three days a week. That was his job Um, and, you know, he just... He had such a positive outlook and he had simple, you know, he ate simple food, he, like a very yeah. simple, uncomplicated yeah. lifestyle. And he got to 91 and I've always had that as my framework of like, I have really good genes. I have really good vitality. Um, I'm going to age really well. And I have to say when I hit this perimenopause thing where all of a sudden I was aching all over and I was like holy Jesus Christ this is not matching my expectation something has got to give yeah Um, so I think yeah there's a a good wake-up call I think and uh, as you said before I think we need to keep in mind that this is a transition point very similar to when we first become mums or go through puberty or whatever and it is tricky and messy sometimes and it's also magical and it's also for a purpose and it's not permanent Um, but it is an invitation it is, yeah, and <laughs> it's all part of our life and yeah. we just need to know how to manage manage the journey Yeah, and be so well good. informed because then we go into our 60s and then our 70s mm-hmm. and, you know, yes, yes, it's yes. just being constantly valuing your physical, mental, spiritual health. Mm-hmm. If you've just, if just just do it just yeah. just put that on the top of the the list of priorities yeah and move through life mm-hmm. knowing that you know you're well informed and you're giving respect to those three factors and then what what more can you do is all yeah, I exactly say. well that's with that's what's within your control that's the influence um my final question and it kind of leads on to what you just said if someone's listening, and I'm going to include myself in this, <laughs> if someone's listening going, oh, this all sounds very good, but there's an excuse, right? I have no time or I have no whatever, fill in the blank here. What do you want to say to those people? Um, it, it sounds like you really had a, just a like moment in time where there was a decision and you were aligned with that yeah. decision um, very strongly. For people that are still in that, you know, that change cycle where they're contemplating change, they're not feeling well, but they're not quite at the most painful point yet, so they haven't actually made any changes, what would you say to them? I would say invest in your body now and your soul now because it takes time building muscle, building bones, building resilience, resilience, self-trust. Yeah, Building self-trust is not an overnight Mm. action. Yeah. So I have lots of women who come to me at 65 with osteopenia mm-hmm. and say, yeah. Mary, what do I do? I need yeah. to take the injection now. And I'm like, I mean, I've got family who I adore who just hear me harp, 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 harp. And I got the call from my cousin who said, Mary. And yeah. I said, don't you dare tell me you've got that. She said, mm-hmm. I do. Listen, just listen and take action now. Mm-hmm. And grab yourself, if you can see the ladder, if you're down at the bottom, grab yourself and drag yourself somehow to the top and just make yourself a priority. Yeah. Because if you're not strong, if you're not healthy, then what happens? What happens? It's a ripple effect to everything. The structure around you, it'll just collapse. So do it now. Totally. Start now. Do it before it becomes a crisis point and you have to make a really hard decision. You don't need to get to a crisis point. No, no, definitely You need to just make an informed decision today that you're Mm going to value you. Yeah. That's it. Mm. That's it, So simple, really. (laughs) It sounds simple, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. 
Um, can you remind us, so I'm going to put all the links to everything underneath. Um, I'm off to visit your website to look at your before and after picture um, and just inspire myself. I have to say I love because I have an aversion to weight loss for an end goal because yeah. that has led me to abuse my body for yeah. decades, yes, decades yes. and decades, and particularly the concept of yeah, weighing a certain amount equals happiness and weighing a certain amount magically gives you self-worth, which neither of those things are true. Oh, shit. So yeah. I I really am resonating with the fact that you're actually speaking something that you've lived. And I know for so many people it takes going and seeing a real before and after, not of a weight loss situation, but of a woman who was not prioritising herself and who is. Um, so can you remind us at strongformula.com? That's it. And if you perfect. want to download the app, it's Strong Formula. Oh, yes. That's perfect. it. Perfect. You just perfect. go to the app store, Google Play, and download Strong Formula. So good. And don't, you will get the call from me. You'll get the email because I love, there's nothing more that I love than just reaching out to women who sign up, just suddenly go, so hi, good. Kylie. So that's cool. strong coach. And they're like, what? What? Like real strong coach? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> So beware, so I'll, I'll find you, even if you're in a mine in Utah, I've yeah. done that, you know. It sounds like you've done that before. I've done it before, so definitely. And any cool. questions, if anyone wants anything, needs me, needs advice, mm -hmm. off the record, you know, not app related, just yeah. always. I'm yeah. always there, DM me, anything. Thank you so much. You have been inspirational such a joy to connect so i've had such a beautiful combination of guests today just so such good a... and thank you so much for giving me the platform no worries to i'm share very happy to be connected um no doubt we will stay in touch so we will. thank we you will. for All sharing right, your Carly, beautiful thank self thank you so much bye bye see ya Thanks so much for listening in to today's episode. If you love the show, as I hope you do, please take the time to subscribe on your favourite pod listening platform and rate and review. And for bonus points, if you have a friend or someone who popped to mind as you were listening to this episode, why not hit the share link wherever you're listening and send them a little love bomb. Like, listen to this. Did you know this is normal? <laughs> I really, really, really would love to get these beautiful stories into the hearts and ears and minds of so many more midlife mavens and your help spreading the love is truly, truly appreciated. Thank you so much. I'm Kylie Patchett, your host, and have a spectacular day.